Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Fenter. I'm a fertility specialist at Brighter Lab Fertility Clinic. Today I'm going to talk to you about the ERA test, as we call it the Endometrial Receptivity Array. And the question is, can this test help us to improve our clinical pregnancy rate here at Brighter Lab? So what I always tell my patients when we embark on an IVF uh, journey is that we need two things. We need a good quality embryo and we need a well-prepared receptive uterus. The ERA test, the Endometrial Receptivity Array, has been designed exactly for this purpose, to test uterine receptivity. What the ERA test that do is it go and look for the genetic expression of the uterus, meaning is this uterus receptive on a specific day. So by testing the genetic expression or the receptivity of the uterus, we can actually then improve the synchronicity between the embryo and the uterus, making sure that the embryo has its best chance of implanting at the right time. Just as a reminder that the endometrium is the lining of the uterus, and this lining needs to be well receptive, well prepared prior to the embryo that's been placed. So what do we know about the ERA test is, we know due to a lot of publications on, on the topic, um, we do know that some women, especially women with recurrent implantation failure, as a 30% of them as a displaced window of implantation. Also we know is that certain conditions, conditions in the uterus, also can displace this window. So it's very important when we look at the uterus to make sure that is these conditions present, because then we know these patients might be prone to a displaced window of implantation. The real question we had five years back when being introduced to the ERA technology is can this improve clinical pregnancy rates in our uh, fertility unit? So we specifically looked at a group of patients um, and this number is now over 100 of these patients that were diagnosed with recurrent implantation failure and we went to look at how the ERA test contributed to success in these cases. In this group of patients, um, on average they had three failed previous attempts. Some of them had as up to eight pre previous failed attempts. Some of these patients had been um, suggested that they consider surrogacy. So this was a real desperate group of patients that we were dealing with. So we looked at these cases um, and in this group of patients, after performing the ERA test, we found that more than half of these patients had a displaced window of implantation. So we then went to look at these women, we then started to prepare their uteruses, treating other conditions that can affect implantation, and then we did a mock cycle, and during this mock cycle we did the ERA test, or the ERA test. We did find in this group of patients that more than half of them had a displaced window of implantation, which was encouraging to say, well, maybe we find a reason for the implantation failure. The real question was, is what was our clinical pregnancy rate in this group of patients with recurrent implantation failure. So we got, in this particular um, study, we got a 48% ongoing pregnancy rate. If you go back and look at what was the chance of these women to conceive of after their previous failed attempts, it was less than 10%. So we could safely say that after employing the ERA test that we did have a fivefold increase in the chances to conceive. I think we can safely say that the ERA test is a very important tool in helping some of our patients to conceive. I think the ERA test in our practice has changed many lives and I think will continue to change many lives. I think it is very important that if you have a patient with recurrent implantation failure to strongly consider to making the ERA, ERA test part of your um, treatment. And I also think that if you have a patient that only has one embryo, one very precious embryo to transfer, that the ERA test has the potential to assist that embryo to have a higher chance of implantation. I hope you found this video informative and you're always welcome to come and share your story with us. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel.